Welcome to Full Measure. I'm Cheryl Ackeson. Since 2002, billions of U.S. tax dollars have been spent rebuilding Afghanistan after its decades of war. A big chunk of that money pays Afghan soldiers and police. But it turns out a lot of those troops may not, in fact, exist. We investigate how your tax money is being wasted on ghost soldiers. We've been raising this concern about ghosts going back a number of years. And we first heard about it. Actually, ironically, I heard about it from Ashraf Ghani years ago, before he became president. He warned me about ghosts. So we started looking three years ago. John Sopko is the inspector general watching over the U.S. taxpayer billion spent to rebuild Afghanistan. When you say ghosts, what are you referring to? Well, we're talking about policemen, Afghan policemen, Afghan military, Afghan civil servants who don't exist or they have multiple identity cards and we're paying their salaries. By we, I mean the United States and the international community. And we started finding out that we had no capacity to measure the number of soldiers, teachers, doctors, military people who we are paying their salaries. For years, multiple audits have shown there's no way to prove that the money we send for salaries is going to a real live body. And the payroll numbers just don't add up. For example, Sako says in June 2016, the supposed number of Afghan military and police was 319,595. But an Afghan official told AP the best internal estimate of the real number was around 120,000. This implies fraud, obviously. Oh, absolutely, major fraud. And what's happening is the commanders or uh, generals or other higher officials are actually pocketing the salaries of the ghosts. And I remember President Ghani, again, at that time he wasn't president, saying, John, you, the United States government, are paying the salary of an Afghan who's a teacher, he's a civil servant, he's a doctor, he's a policeman, and he's a soldier, and it's the same Afghan, and he doesn't exist. Paying for reconstruction in war-ravaged countries is an American tradition. After World War II, there was the Marshall Plan, named after Secretary of State George Marshall. The U.S. spent, in today's terms, $103 billion over four years to rebuild 16 European countries. Today, U.S. taxpayers have now far outspent the Marshall Plan on Afghanistan reconstruction, more than $117 billion. $68 billion of that has gone for Afghan National Defense and Security Forces, the country's police and military. Last year, the governor of Helmand, Afghanistan, reported discovering at least 400 non-existent ghost soldiers on that province's payroll. And Helmand's police chief was also quoted as saying that of 26,000 Afghan National Defense Security Forces assigned there, 40 to 50 percent did not exist physically when we asked for help during operations. So you're talking about instead of 300-some thousand, it may be only 150,000 actually exist. Especially in Helmand province, the new g provincial governors down there were raising serious concerns that most of the police and the soldiers that they needed during the last fighting season weren't there. In multiple letters and audits, Sopko has taken the Pentagon, which manages the money, to task, stating persistent reports raise questions regarding whether the U.S. government is taking adequate steps to prevent taxpayer funds from being spent on so-called ghost soldiers. And he says the ghost phenomenon extends beyond Afghan defense and security paychecks to other forms of aid. It's not just the salaries. But we're funding schools based upon the number of students. So if you invent or inflate the number of students, you're going to be paying more money. On the soldiers and the police, we're paying for extra boots, for food, for everything else, logistics, for numbers that don't exist. Is there any way to tell who is taking the money? It's difficult because of the security situation. We in the U.S. oversight community can't get out. Even the U.S. military can't get out anymore. So it's very difficult. It's really up to the Afghans or designing systems for the Afghans to implement. Who would it be that could conceivably help fix this or who is responsible for the misspending? Well, the misspending is obviously the Afghans. They're the ones who are stealing the money. 
who we are holding accountable is the U.S. government for not considering this to be an issue when we raised it three or four years ago, but also not implementing some reforms to ensure that there actually is a soldier on the other end of that PACE statement. The Pentagon is implementing a new system of biometrics in Afghanistan using fingerprints, photos, and blood type. It recently said up to 95 percent of Afghan police and 70 to 80 percent of soldiers are now enrolled. The idea is to dispense with old ghosts and ensure proof of life among a faraway force funded by U.S. taxpayers. What kind of money are we talking about? Hundreds of millions of dollars we're talking about that may be lost. The Pentagon expects to complete its person-by-person -person verification of Afghans' army and police in July. Still ahead on Full Measure, the oldest profession with a new twist. Sex traffickers take a page from ISIS through online recruiting, pushing teenagers into prostitution.